Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Anna, your online therapist. Such a pleasure to have you all back. And honestly, I've had a good weekend. No complaints, I hope you have. I wanted to do this video. Yes, change scenery. It's class time apparently. So I wanted to talk about continuing with my um, discussions about how our the psychology of our belief systems, how our beliefs are formed. Well, today's topic, I want to talk about social influence and conformity. I wanted to talk about how our parents, you know, immediate family members influence us. I thought, why not expand it? So guys, um, we're going to be talking about social influence and conformity. And I have quite the note on my phone. Yay. <laughs> so going through my study and it was like, whoa, I have to include this in my psychology beliefs because it's like, you would be amazed at how we are so influenced by social conformity, social groups, family groups, peer groups, you name it. So there's this guy, Milgram, great guy. He does this experiment where you have a learner and a teacher and for every um, wrong answer the learner gives, the teacher is supposed to shock. Now both learner and teacher are participants or volunteers in this experiment. And here are the four um, choices or the four prompts the teachers are given when it's like, oh, I don't want to shock somebody. First is please continue. Then it's the experiment requires you to continue. Then it's it's absolutely essential that you continue. And the fourth one is you have no choice but to continue. Now, obedience in this experiment was highest when there was a presence of authority, such as the researcher or someone, you know, like supervisor ish thing that made it easy for people to obey was when you put the subject away somewhere else you know depersonalize it's like who knows maybe you're shocking a rabbit you know maybe it's not touching them just move the personal subject away from the volunteer and the third is when there's no role model of defiance that means everybody else is doing it nobody is um Rejecting, nobody is refusing. If everybody else is doing it, okay. So, my forgive me, I'm, I'm it's a lot, so I'm I need to keep myself in line with the topic by reading the notes because it helps. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go ramble on and on and on. So, back to my notes. It's the reason why we conform to traffic lights like over here in the US. Here in California, we have the main um, highway lanes and then we have the HOV lanes, that's high occupancy vehicle, high vehicle occupancy, whatever. This is for two or more. Um, that means two people, two persons, two human beings, not you and your dog, but you and your baby or kid, just as long as there's a minimum of two people can get on this line. Now it's double lane, double mark. That means ways traffic rules is if it's double marked, you don't cross. Now, when a situation of maybe um, there's a bus in that lane and people behind feel like it's not, it's going at 40 miles per hour on a 65 miles per hour on highway. They break out of that line, those double lanes get into the main uh, traffic lanes and then get back in. Now that's against the law, but here's the thing. When one person does it, you'd see like two or three people doing it. If nobody does it, guess what? Nobody does it. So the same thing with traffic lane, uh, traffic rules or dress codes, you know. As long as there's nobody breaking those rules, nobody's breaking those rules. The minute one person breaks those rules, everybody comes in tow. So that is group conformity right there, social influence and conformity. And honestly, sometimes we mimic people. Yes, 
If someone yawns in front of you, you respond automatically without even knowing, like, you find yourself for no reason. And to you, it could feel like, you know, normal, but that was actually what they call automatic mimicry. Believe it or not, you know. And now let's talk about when group conformity is highest. A lot of people join bad gangs so that they don't feel like the worst, so that they don't feel like they don't belong, so they don't feel like the outcast, the black sheep. You know, that's why kids join gangs. And sometimes you join groups so that you don't feel uncomfortable, you don't feel like a dumbass, something like that. Other times, if there's two or more people agreeing to something, well, it must be right, right? Have you ever seen a situation? I see this all the time, I mean, this is where parked in Costco, trying to get gas. We've got nine gas pumps. But you see, the first two are usually the ones people pile into it. It's like, yeah, I know, there's left and right side of the gas pumps, the, the, the gas, whatever, for the cars. A lot of people whose gas, whatever, is on the left, they will all pile up into that. It's like, guy, <laughs> there's like three more empty. You know, it's like people just follows like monkey see monkey do i've said it in the previous episode how we just follow the crowd and it's so weird but it's true it really does happen you know and it's like you're you have to be aware you have to be conscious self-aware and self-conscious to be like uh, no, I'm not joining that ridiculous queue for no reason. I've got places to be, things to do, thank you. And that's usually me, honestly. If I come and it's like, it's all open, park my car where it's free, okay? Even if I have to do the extra pulling. Yeah. And it's, and we've been accommodated with the extra pulling because when you take the gap, pump out of it, you know, it's not just straight to the car. You can pull it and bring it around. Like, it's okay, your, your gas, whatever, is on the other side, not directly next to it. Anyway, but you guys understand what I'm saying. So, we do that. And another reason why room conformity is highest is we feel everyone watching you. <laughs> this is the weirdest when you walk into a room and everyone is looking at you. If you wanted to adjust your dress for women or you know do some crazy self-conscious thing you suddenly become walk a certain way don't do nonsense don't do nothing just do this just go find your seat <laughs> you often feel embarrassed when you like everybody's watching you because like they can see and smell every single error of the stick you know so you're just like you gotta be perfect you gotta watch everything you do and people when you sense feeling that you're being watched you are gonna do what everybody else does it's like if, if, if have you ever seen a crowd of people trying to sit at a stadium and one person goes what do they what do they do you know even if they're doing that probably because they're chubby or probably because they have two things in their hands there's every possibility that the next three or four person is gonna go what do they what do they do this is <laughs> is what that person has done so that's a huge influence on our belief of why we do what we do. You know, belief, I believe, I, I define a belief system as the reason you do what you do. Unfortunately, sometimes our beliefs are not um, uh, accompanied by reason. It's just group think or group uh, conformity. And then there's the other one. Where, so when we talk about examples of the social influence and conformity, you talk about peer groups, you talk about college fraternities, fraternities, and you talk about company culture, you talk about how politics is played in different countries. It's like, take Nigeria for instance, it's like there's this stereotype, I'm going to talk about that in my next episode, stereotypes, prejudices, and discrimination, be on the lookout, it's fun guys. 
it gets really good. So when it comes to politics in Nigeria, it's almost anyone you ask is going to be politics is a dirty game. It's like that is a stereotype. Okay. It's like you can't change it. So once you go in, it's people like expect you or even government offices. It's like the police are corrupt. So people go in with the mindset that the police is corrupt. So just go straight to the corrupt conversations and don't bother, you know. So that's another thing that can occur when you're talking about group mindsets. Just just go straight to the ideology that this is it. Don't ask questions, don't bring up issues, you know. And the thing about group social influences and conformity is it can make you know when you're in a group and it's just like one person who's holding up the entire group and everybody else is just loafing yeah social loafing makes people put less effort as long as they're not accountable you know right remember when we talked about group uh attitude where the negative um personal tendencies come to four because no one is held accountable. So hey, go crazy, go wild compared to when you are held individually accountable. You're like, pull back, right? So crazy, so weird. So guys, we talked about it and I'm hoping you understand that the biggest one of all is religious dogmas and requirements and practices where it's like, People who are Catholics practice uh, religion a certain way. If you dare do something else, everyone's going to be looking at you like, what are you doing? You know, even if you go to a Catholic church in another geographical area and they practice, maybe at a certain point you, you, where you stand in your old local church, they kneel. Even if you're used to standing, you're gonna kneel. <laughs> Why? Because it's what everybody's doing. Okay? Same thing. If a pastor is, you know, accused of something fraud, you know, abuse, um, it's like nobody talks. Why? It's a pastor. You're not supposed to talk. Right? Nobody talks. It's like, yeah, but you have to speak against ill doing you have to talk about wrongdoing it's like it's a pastor touching up my anointing nobody told okay it takes a person who is very aware and very conscious to go right in and like stop we're not gonna do this you know and that's the danger of group think everybody agrees and everybody acts the same way you know what do we want more where do we want it now things like that so as dangerous as social conformity is, it's helpful in some ways, such as when crowds are cheering at a football stadium or at a concert and also stage fright. That's what a group can do to you. So as much as um, you believe in your individuality, it's really important to understand how strong these social and group influences can be on you. So you've got to be on your A game when you step outside because, hey, there's a lot of energy from other people out there that can sway or shift you if you are not, if you don't have very strong convictions about what you do and why you do Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening and I will see you in my next video. Ta-ta, enjoy and do have a lovely week. See you in my next video. Thanks. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, guys. Appreciate all the feedbacks, and all the likes, and all the subscriptions. See you in my next video.